the Joe Rogan experience. You know. I see myself dying like George Carlin in a hotel room in Vegas somewhere <laughs> in between shows. I, I don't oh. think I'm going to quit. It's too much fun. And I, I miss it. it I miss and it so much. He stuck with it. That guy had crazy highs and crazy lows. He had all the highs of like, you know, occupation fool and class clown. Then I saw him in the 80s at the Warner Theater and he was kind of flailing a little bit. Like yes. he had lost his way and then he, he was trying out these new concepts. Some worked. Some didn't. He ended with the seven dirty words because, you know, I got to end my show. Then he came roaring back with that, um, the one about the earth. Uh, the earth is not dying. We are. Like right. It was this, you know, because I think he thought maybe I'm done. Like maybe I'm a relic. And no, he stuck with it. And then he came roaring back. And you can always do that. I got a chance arts. to see him in, at uh, Hampton Beach Casino in uh, really? New Hampshire. Yeah, when I was... I mean, I I think I was 20, something like that, uh -huh. 20 or 21, and uh, I took my roommates to see him, and he bombed. <laughs> yeah. It was a weird yeah. time for his career. It was one of yeah. those weird moments where he had this uh, routine that he was working on where he'd basically say, fuck everything. He would say, fuck Israel, and fuck comedy clubs. He, like, he had this list of things that he was saying fuck to, but it did. I think he was no just joke. going through a lot of weird stuff in his life then there was some substance issues that he had had he had yeah. money problems with the irs owing too much money to the irs there was a lot of shit that was going on in his life at those times and also i think that he was a little bit freaked out by you know he had opened the door him and prior especially in terms of language and subject matter and now here's people like sam kinnison and Andrew Dice clay coming along and and chris rock that are pushing it even further in both good and bad ways and he's like, do I even fucking like, right. what, why do they need me? Like, like, I think there was a couple of years where he felt like, am I John Wayne at the end of the searchers? I've rescued everyone and I've helped progress the world, but I don't belong in the world. And then I'm just going to walk away into the desert. Mm. There's always that moment of like, sometimes your bravery helps bring about a world that ironically you don't belong in anymore. Ooh. And it's so, that's such a weird, I mean, I feel like that's what happened to Joan Rivers at the end of her career. She broke so many goddamn barriers for women and for talking about certain subject matter. And then at the end of her career, she suddenly saw all of her stuff get parsed by this new generation that's like, this this generation that's attacking her and parsing her stuff, you're enjoying the freedoms you're enjoying partially because of the shit that she did. She yeah. laid down barbed wire so you could run across it and then point at her for not using the correct language. You not, know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Not just not the correct language, but deciding what she can and can't joke about. And I love the fact that to her dying day, she didn't give a day. fuck. She was like, I'm not apologizing yeah. for shit. This is what I do. I make mm -hmm. fun of things. And I'm going to make fun of you. And I make fun of me. And I make fun of my yeah. family. Fuck you. And she yeah, she exactly. held on to her guns forever. Yeah, man forever yes, she but, never never let it go never let it go but, never shifted fearless but that will happen that'll happen to all of us at some point there will be another wave of podcasters that won't understand the stuff that you and Marin and people like that did podcasting wise and will do it and look back at you guys like what are you even talking about it's like the reason you're doing what you're doing is because of the shit that we laid down like and, and it'll happen to me as a comedian it's happened to um Filmmakers, everyone's shitting on Martin Scorsese for going, not a fan of the Marvel films. He, he, was, he never said, don't go see them. He's like, they're not for me. Like, you motherfucker. <laughs> like, uh, you wouldn't have your Marvel film if Scorsese hadn't done his movies. Because yes. all those movies are what made the guys who direct your movies, you like, go, I want to do that. Right. Like, you, he gets to be... He gets to have any fucking opinion he wants. Well, and you know? also, what's wrong with not liking certain things? Like, I have very good friends who like things that I think are terrible. I, I still like yeah. them. Like, you're allowed that if you don't like... Yeah. I have friends who hate Marvel comic movies. I fucking <laughs> love them. I yeah. love comic book movies. And Me I have too. friends like, I'm not watching that stupid shit. That guy's definitely going to live. You're not, nothing's going to happen. He's the hero. I'm like, listen, man... <laughs> I get it. I, I understand how you feel a certain way, but uh, the other thing about film to think about a guy like Scorsese, where he needs to be put in much uh, a, a much better perspective, is that when you think about some of the stuff that he did in like the seventies, 
what movies had only been around for like real movies for like yeah. 40 years like yeah. king kong like in the 30s and then here yeah. you go 40 years later you're talking about yeah. some of those scorsese movies or the coppola movies and like apocalypse now like think about how yeah. crazy that movie is when you really stop and think about when it was actually created and how what a, a short time films had even been made like that yeah and, and and how crazy the execution of it is. It's like, well, when I when I hosted the Independent Spirit Awards, uh, the year I hosted it in 2014, it was the 50th anniversary of John Waters' first film, which oh. he made when he was a teenager in Baltimore. It's called Hag in a Black Leather Jacket, and it's about an <laughs> interracial wedding being um, presided over by a Klansman. It's a Klansman marrying um, an interracial couple. That was his, he shot it on his parents' roof, in Baltimore in the 60s, and I told the audience, like, this is the 50th anniversary of John Waters' first film. Any of you guys are like, are we pushing too far? Are we going too far? He's already done all that work for you. Fucking go for it. <laughs> As a teen he was an openly gay teenager in 1960s Baltimore shooting an interracial wedding on his parents' roof with a Klansman doing the ceremony. <laughs> so just do whatever the fuck you want. It's okay. Just fucking go for oh, it. You know? That's so perfect. Yeah, it's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. But <laughs>